Hello and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my living room. <laughs> so it has been a little over three months since I created this carnivorous plant terrarium and I will link it here if you haven't watched how I created this but I thought it was about time I give you all an update on how everything is doing. If you didn't know I'm not a big carnivorous plant gal. I've never had much success in growing them and my extent well actually I guess my extent of growing Venus flytraps they always died. They never did well, they always died. Um, I could never figure out the right level of moisture for that peat moss soil. Um, and I just, I just, they just didn't work out for me. The only carnivorous plants I have had some luck with are my Nepenthes. I have two different types. I believe they're very common ones and they've done pretty well for me, although they do ne get neglected pretty often so the pictures dry out quite a lot but I'm very aware that that's my issue. Outside of that I've never had any success with any other carnivorous plants. I've tried different types of pitcher plants, I've tried sundews before and they just never worked out for me. So in creating this terrarium this was kind of my last like okay I'm going to try and give these plants an environment in which I think that they would like. And if this doesn't work, then I give up, <laughs> I give up. Um, and so I created this. Since then, quite a bit has happened with the tank, which I'm gonna go through. This is an old turtle tank of mine that I've had for a very long time. So this was reused, it's very scratched. It's not the most perfect looking thing. Um, but a lot has actually gone on with this terrarium since I did it and also I have noticed some things that I wish that I did in the original video when creating it that I wish I could take back time but I'm not going to redo it either. So I'm going to go through those in the video but let me run some b-roll for you just to show you how it's looking right now. So since that video I did add more plants I had some dead Venus flytraps that um, I did include in the original planting, but they were already dead and it seems that they haven't come back to life. So I have added one Venus flytrap. I have also added three sundews, which I actually were two plants that I split into three. I also added one much larger, different type of pitcher or a Saracenia plant. Let's go through the moss first because um, this was kind of a lead on video to my sphagnum moss video in which I had, I wanted to try growing live sphagnum. Now, as you can see, a lot of the sphagnum is quite dry. Some of it is green, some of it's still alive, but a lot of it has died. I am totally okay with that. As with any new type of plant and moss included, there is a massive learning curve when it comes to watering and the appropriate moisture levels. I'm trying to still figure out what moisture levels are correct for this terrarium. When I first made this, I had quite a scary issue with mold. So there was white mold that was growing on almost everything. I will see if I've ever taken a photo or video of it. I think that I had. Um, so there was white mold going on everywhere. And because of that, I was very careful about how much water I was adding into it. Um, I thought maybe it's too moist. I thought maybe, I don't know, maybe a load of different issues to be very honest. Um, and that killed a lot of the larger moss that I had in here. As you can see, it's become all brown. Um, there is some still little areas of white mold that I can see, which I will show you. But in general, it has calmed down. So when that happened, I was like, oh my God, I'm an idiot. Why didn't I include charcoal? in the bottom of this goddamn terrarium. 
I don't know why I forgot this essential piece. So charcoal essentially helps in the breakdown of plant material and keeps kind of, it oxygenates it and it keeps the turnover going pretty well, like a little ecosystem. So I was really, really upset that I did not add that. And I think that the mold issue would not have become such a widespread issue if I had done that. So that is a boo-boo, but you know, it is what it is. I did kind of panic in my head and I was like, oh my God, should I just take everything out and redo it? Or should I just leave it and do absolutely nothing? Treat the care and the watering the exact same and just see what happens. And that's obviously the route that I chose, to be honest with plants, that's generally the route that I choose. And I just thought, you know what, if it dies, it dies. I learned my lesson. I'm going to redo it again. However, it actually didn't get so bad. It didn't take over a lot of the other plants that were going on. It was really mainly a moss issue and the other plants didn't seem to suffer as much. While there's still a little bit of, of mold going on, I still think it's actually all right. But during that period, I definitely held off on watering and spraying the top of all of the plants and the, and the sphagnum included because I was afraid of spreading the moss even more, things being too damp. So as a result of that, it seems that the sphagnum, a lot of it has died at the top, but you know, I'm okay with that. That's a sacrifice I made and you know, it's fine. We're just gonna see what happens. Like I said, there is some of it growing so I'm not overly concerned. It's also a case that like what I want to create here is a sort of a wetland bog habitat, which is where plants like this would normally grow. And in those habitats, layers and layers of dead dried sphagnum is actually what creates peat. So to be honest, for me, that's pretty natural. It's not something I'm going to remove. I'm definitely gonna leave it all there and let it just, you know, sit. Um, and it may end up creating some, some really good organic substrate material for the other plants that are in here. So that's what's going on with that. I wish the sphagnum was more successful in, in parts where there, you know, there is a greater amount of soil and buildup. There are much more green parts of the sphagnum, which I enjoy. Um, as far as any red colored sphagnum that I put in, none of that has really appeared to survive. Some of it is okay, um, but it doesn't look too hot. But, you know, I'm giving it time. With this thing, I just really want time to be the teller. You know, I want to not mess with this too much. So that's as far as the moss. Other mosses, there was a, a type of moss, which I actually don't know what it is, that came on the top of the additional Saracenia that I added in. I don't know what that is. It was also on top of the sundews. That, I mean, that's been doing fine. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's been doing fine. Like I said, other mosses not doing so hot. There is this starry moss that is hanging on there, but it's not fantastic. Um, it's actually been quite a while since I've picked this up and looked underneath the soil layer. I'm just checking, is there any mold growth underneath? There doesn't seem to be a whole lot. But yeah, like I said, I'm just gonna see where that goes. And if all the moss dies, I will add to it at a later date once the ecosystem in there is a little bit more stable. There are a couple of strands of grass growing in there, which is understandable because I took a lot of this from the wild, which I will actually remove because that will just end up taking over. Yeah, so let's go through each plant then. We've spoken about the moss. The butterworts or the pingic, ping, pingicula? Ping, pingicula or pingula? Pingicula? I don't know. Um, they have seemed to be doing much better. Like I said with these, I think it was a light issue because I had left them in a dark corner that was just, I just didn't care for them at all. As you can see, this is the light that I actually use on it just to show you how close um, 
I actually put them. I give them quite a lot of light, to be honest. They, they seem to be doing much better, especially this one at the back here. It's a much healthier color. That one looked almost dead, so it's totally come back. This one definitely, there's some kind of drying up or yellowing of the outer leaves. I'm not sure how normal that is or how fast the leaf turnover is going to be. It might be that the newer leaves are happier and it's just getting rid of old leaves that weren't suited to this environment and this light level. So I'm giving them a chance, but I'm happy with them. I think they actually look great and are doing pretty well. Um, what else? So the sundews, I've never had much luck with these either. Um, definitely a good bit of leaf loss in the lower leaves, but not on the newer leaves. And I would, to be honest, take that to be very normal for a new plant that is entering a totally different environment. And in the adjustment period, I think it just gets rid of older leaves. I'm not too worried about them. There's new leaves growing. It's actively growing. The new leaves look good. Um, they look sticky. They look good. They're a good formation. Um, I'm pretty happy with how they're going. Like I said, I'm not going to remove any old leaves from this setup because I want it to become its own ecosystem. More on that later. <laughs> okay, so the Saracenias. This one here looks pretty bad. It's not doing so hot. However, it was looking pretty bad before too, in my opinion. It had a lot of dried pictures and it's definitely was under a lot of stress before I even put it in this situation. It has continued to decline. However, there are areas of new growth that are coming up quite recently with new pictures coming and it looks very healthy and good to me. I do think there was a little bit of mold growth on this as well, which may have affected it too, but I am happy with how that's going. It it's, seems to be adjusting and it seems to be actively growing, which I think is a positive thing. And I think with this one, we're just going to have to see how it does. With the other one, so when I put this in, like this was one of the newer ones that I added in. And when I put it in, it looked um, very healthy and then it declined. And same thing with the other one, the pictures dried up. There was, There is a little bit of mold growth on one of them that's dying back. However, in the last two weeks, there's been a great push of new growth. As you can see, there's a lot of new pictures coming up, a lot of small ones, some big ones. So I'm very happy with that. I think that it's showing it's going in a promising direction. Um, as you can see, the Venus flytrap. So this has been a little bit of a point of discussion. So this Venus flytrap, I got really excited a couple of weeks ago when I saw that this was about to flower. I saw a flower stall coming up and I was like, oh my God, this is gonna flower for me. That's so exciting, this has never happened. And with my history of Venus flytraps, I was <laughs> totally like, this can't be happening. Got so excited that I posted it on TikTok. If you don't follow me there, you can if you want to. I will put it on the screen. But essentially, everybody was like, oh my God, no, you have to cut it. Because um, for a, a couple of different reasons, people were saying that once it flowers, it tends to die. People were also saying that with a plant that small, with so little traps on it, it probably will take too much energy from the plant and it might die afterwards. So then I was kind of like in panic mode and I was like, oh my God, <laughs> asking people. Um, I did some Google searches and I really found conflicting information. I was finding people saying the same thing as the people on TikTok, but also people saying that it's not a big deal, that they can flower all the time and it's fine. Um, so I really didn't know what to do. So I reached out to this um, page on Instagram, which I will link here because it's such a cool Instagram page for carnivorous plants. So I found, <coughs> I followed them for a while um, really beautiful pictures and really interesting species. And I left a comment under a Venus flytrap picture and I asked. 
they said that they let them flower and also they can crossbreed and stuff but also you can pollinate within the one flower on this plant so they were saying that you know you could also do this but um, they also can cut them as well if they don't need to there's no reason for them to flower so I was kind of like look it doesn't sound that extreme and like I said earlier I just like to see what happens so I decided to leave the flower stalk now there is a second one. The flowers haven't quite opened, but it's gone very big. The plant doesn't seem itself to be declining yet anyway. And there are new traps coming as well. I'm just gonna see what happens. I will definitely take a little video and probably post on Instagram or TikTok when they do open because I think they're really cute looking. And I will try to pollinate it myself as well just between the flowers and see if we get some seeds if we get some seeds then they're going to drop in the moss and then hopefully they'll grow too um and I just think that's really exciting so that to me is much more exciting than losing a Venus fly trap that didn't cost me very much money that only has a couple of traps on it you know I would rather go through that experience and see what happens and if I lose a plant, I lose a plant. I've learned my lesson. I'll probably get another one. And if it flowers again, then cut it off, you know? I would like to put out there though on YouTube since I haven't already, what do you think? Do you have a Venus flytrap? Have you let it flower? Um, have you cut it? Has yours flowered and then died? What's the situation there? Do you have any experience with this kind of thing? And I'd love to know what happened. But yeah, other than that, I'm really happy actually with how this has turned out. I know it doesn't particularly look that amazing to me anyway at this point. There's a lot that's dried, there's a lot that's dead but I think that it's going in the right direction and it's not totally failing and that for me is a win. One thing I will say that I do want to do is I want to add springtails and or wood lice to this terrarium and for anybody that lives in Ireland or the EU and you know where to get springtails please do let me know. I am having a lot of trouble actually finding where to get them. Um, I know I probably could find some outside and put them in but I'm not quite sure about doing that yet or what that might introduce but I would also be very wary of I have seen some online but they're not from here and I'm afraid of I'm really afraid of invasive species and I don't really want to introduce anything that wouldn't normally be here in case they escaped or something you never know with these kinds of things it's better to be just careful with it with live animals like that you know if I put some in compost and then they start breeding like you never know what's gonna happen so I am looking for some that are native to Ireland but can be bought online or something like that. Alternatively, if I look for much longer and I'm still not having any luck, then I'm going to look into just finding some in the wild and putting them in. Essentially, they are going to be my cleanup crew. All of the dead leaves, the dead sphagnum, all of that stuff that's um, basically decomposing, they're going to help um, with that whole process and also the soil turnover and stuff and aerating it like really it's just sitting here and it is quite wet a lot of the time and we need something that's going through and turning it over and adding oxygen in there as well which I think will just make for an actual active ecosystem and terrarium which obviously in turn will help the plants. So that is kind of my three month update. I've learned some things. I've definitely made some mistakes, um, but I've learned a lot and it's not dead. So that's a win-win for me. Um, so I'm really happy with it. I think it looks really cool. I need to get, um, it's not normally in front of our couch. It's actually in the corner near the turtle tank, which you actually may be able to hear in this video. And if you can, I sincerely apologize for the noise of the filter. I want to find like a black table or something to have it more as a display in this room because I do think it looks really cool, especially at night. Oh, I actually do want to mention that I do cover the top of the terrarium with a kind of a leftover plastic thing which doesn't look too hot but it's just to keep in 
the humidity and moisture in there and I do leave a small gap at the edge just for a little bit of airflow but it doesn't make much difference I don't think. So yeah it, it is much more of a closed in environment than you see here just just another note. But that is it for the update. I hope that you enjoyed watching. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, or interact with this video in whatever way that you feel that you want to, because it really helps me out. And I will see you very soon in the next video. Bye.